Hey everyone, Matt Meisenheimer with Backcountry Journeys here. Today we've got a pretty cool video in store. I'm going to talk about what's in my camera bag. I added a couple new pieces of gear for this year, so I'm excited to kind of walk through everything I'm using. And we really will, you know, everything that I talk about today, it's gear that I recommend and gear that I use on every trip I go on. So this will be, you know, fairly landscape centric. Uh, one of our great guides, Ben Blankenship, is going to do a similar video on uh, what's in his bag, but more so in terms of, of you know wildlife photography. So you'll have two great resources, one landscape oriented and one wildlife oriented for you know some of the gear that we recommend here, and at least some of the gear we're using here at Backcountry Journeys. So let's get started. So my primary camera is the Nikon Z7. Uh, it's just been an absolutely amazing camera for me. I'm really, really happy with it. I know it got some flack because of the lack of dual card slots and some of the focus system uh, you know, issues with IAF and things like that, but I've really been happy with it. I mean, for me, when it comes to landscapes, noise handling and dynamic range are the two things that matter most. And this camera's got it. I mean, this is probably at the top of the line for those two things. The ergonomics are great. I mean, in the hands, just it, it feels really good. The button layout works great. So, you know, I'm converted. I, I think I'll stick with the Z series. I'm going to use this camera for the foreseeable future, but I think Nikon is going to have a big announcement sometime this year. We'll see. You know, maybe I'll upgrade, maybe I won't. Uh, right now though, really, really happy with this system. I, th I think it works great. I think the Z6 and the Z7 uh, were fantastic and I think the Mark II versions are going to be even better. Now let's get into lenses. So a 14 to 30 f4 is on here right now. And you know, I wanted to spend some time on this lens because it's really the reason I switched from using a DSLR to this system. I was using a, a D810 with a 14 to 24 f 2.8, the DSLR version. And uh, it was great. I mean, the image quality is fantastic, but it's a bulbous front element. So I had to attach a huge filter system anytime I wanted to screw on a polarizer or use an ND filter. So it already weighs a lot. And now I had to add to the size and the weight of the lens. And it just, it really frustrated me. So when I saw this 14 to 30, you know, was released or announced and uh, I saw samples where the image quality was just as good as the 14 to 24. I bought it right away, and, and it's really amazing. I mean, the image quality is better than the old 14 to 24. I mean, the sharpness is incredible. It is so small and compact. I mean, this this thing is half the size and weight of that old DSLR lens. It still covers 14 on the wide end, and we even get 30 on the long end. So uh, that's a benefit for me too. And no bulbous front element, so you can you can uh, thread on 82 millimeter filters. That's just huge for me. So this lens has really been it. And I don't think there's a good answer from Sony or Canon for this lens. Uh, you know, it is so small and lightweight and the image quality is fantastic. Uh, you cannot, I don't think you can find a smaller lens where you can get true 14 on a full frame sensor and the, the same image quality. Now, the downside, of course, is it's f4. So if you're doing astrophotography or doing any low light shooting, you might wonder, you know, well, the new 14 to 24 just came out. It's got f2.8. You know, what, what do I decide or what, what, what should I go with? And for me, you know, the f4 is really a non-issue. Uh, I use a star tracker. So if I'm shooting at night, I can shoot long exposures at f4. I'm not worried about that additional stop. And uh, I, the, the size and weight and the portability is, is really the big selling feature. Now, the one thing I don't like is um, it doesn't have, you know, an analog focus meter right here. So it's difficult to know where you're at. You know, are you close to infinity? Uh, I don't like that. And, and I think the, the new 14 to 24 does have that. So that's something to think about. And the sun start from this this lens is is pretty poor. I'm not I'm not happy with it. I miss the sun start from my old DSLR for sure, uh, from the old 14 to 24. Other than that, though, I mean, and this lens has been perfect for me. It's the reason I switched, and it's the reason you know I'm really the main reason I'm really really happy uh, with my switch and the system as a whole. So uh, 
I love this camera, I love this lens. So I'm using a three lens setup. Uh, I've also have a 24 to 70, this is the F4 version. And this lens, you know, I really have mixed feelings on. Uh, the image quality is great, the size is great, but I just don't shoot a lot at this focal length. So, you know, I, I think I'm, I'm gonna get rid of it because if I can downsize to a two lens setup, just make everything easier to carry around and I don't have to, you know, worry about switching all the time. Uh, I, I think I'm gonna try and do that. Uh, I'll talk about the two options for that when I get to my telephoto, but, you know, if you're just looking for a mid-range, I mean, this F4 version is is incredible. There's a 2.82, but it's much bigger, it's much heavier. Uh, I've just found that these these this S-line, uh, the lenses and the image quality is just absolutely fantastic. It's a huge step up from their DSLR counterparts. So although I don't use it much, it's really, really uh, a really nice lens. So this is the telephoto I'm using now. I adapt it. It's the 70 to 300 full frame version of, uh, it's called the AFP line. Uh, I bought this right before I switched to mirrorless. And this is a newer release from Nikon. There's a full frame and a crop sensor version. It's really, really sharp for the price. It, it is not an expensive lens and the image quality is as good as the 70 to 200 F4. So, this lens has been really great. <clears throat> I don't mind adapting it right now, that's fine, but I'm really waiting for the 100 to 400 because that's such a great uh, wildlife and landscape lens. It can do it all. So I know it hasn't been announced. It's in the pipeline though. So that's I'm gonna buy that when it comes out. Now, the other thing that's interesting is the 24 uh, to 200 that Nikon has. I've read mixed reviews on the image, uh, on, on the image. Uh... Now another interesting lens is the 24 to 200 from Nikon. I've read mixed reviews when it comes to image quality, but that essentially covers your mid range and your telephoto up to 200. And getting that in one lens, I mean, that's a big deal to me because I find that a lot of times I'm limited because I don't want to switch lenses in the field. So, you know, maybe there's a great shot to be had at 150 or 200, but I just don't want to change my lens. Now, you know, being able to consolidate that in a 24 to 200 package, that is valuable to me. So I, I'm considering that lens too, but I think I'm going to go with the 100 to 400. Really, really excited uh, for that lens. Okay, let's talk about filters. <clears throat> so I'm using breakthrough filters and uh, I've used everything. Lee, B&W, Hoya, uh, you know, Nisi. I've used a lot of the filters out there. Um, and I've, I use breakthrough now because I think they are the best quality and uh, they're my favorite filters. So I use a circular polarizer and I use a uh, six stop ND filter. Now the polarizer I use for pretty much everything uh, when I'm shooting landscapes. If there's glare, you know, if I'm shooting a waterfall, if I'm shooting fall foliage, I'm gonna use that polarizer. And uh, this is 82 millimeters, and I use something called the step-up ring to accommodate my other lenses that are not the same filter thread. So I have a step-up ring, which means I can just screw this on to all my lenses now. So I use the CPL. Um, the one thing I love about this so much is just the quality of the glass. And that's why I love breakthrough so much. With old filters, I'd be shooting on the coast and I'd get maybe salt or, or some water on my lens and I'd get really bad smudging and condensation. And when you have that, the, the images are just unusable. I've shot with this breakthrough, this X4 CPL. Uh, you know, I, I've been pounded with waves. Just salt, you know, heat, water, everything you can think of. And I've just taken a microfiber cloth and cleaned my lens or cleaned the filter and no smudging, nothing. So that's why I love Breakthrough so much because I don't lose images because I'm using this filter. And I find the coating is actually better than what's on my lenses. So uh, I highly recommend Breakthrough uh, Photography for their filters. Now I'm using a six stop ND as well. Um, I'm not using this thing for like waterfalls or anything. Uh, usually you're in a forest when you're shooting waterfalls and you can get that slow exposure if you want. The main thing I use this ND filter for is when I'm shooting on the coast, uh, specifically the west coast. 
So if I'm shooting into the sun uh, at sunset or right before, it's really hard to get those slow shutter speeds to get that nice, you know, texture and blurred effect in the water. Well, I put this on and I can get, you know, one fifth of a second, one second. Uh, I'll also use it sometimes when there's fast moving clouds, you can kind of streak clouds, get a cool effect. Um, but those are kind of the two primary things. Uh, the CPL though, I mean, if you're doing landscapes, you need a, a good polarizer and I highly recommend the X4 from Breakthrough. In terms of, of cards and storage, I use a mix. I'm, I'm using CF Express cards, I'm using a micro SD, I'm using an SD. So I use all types of different media and I found ProGrade Digital kind of works the best for me. They have the fastest read write speeds uh, on the market, which you know, make shooting in camera uh, an ease when it comes to like burst rate and video bit rate and just processing in general, but also transferring, you know, from a card to a computer super fast. Uh, ProGrade's customer service is excellent. And uh, I just, I really like the cards. I've never had an issue and they're, they're super fast. So um, I really like ProGrade and I would definitely recommend them. Now I got a new piece of equipment for this year that I'm pretty excited about. So this is the Mavic 2 Pro, uh, the DJI drone. So uh, it just got this actually like a week ago. I am super excited for this. I really battled though if I wanted this drone or the Mavic Air 2. Uh, the Mavic Air 2 looks incredible, but ultimately I went with this one because of the one inch sensor, uh, better noise handling, better dynamic range, and uh, it can shoot 10-bit video, which is a really big deal if you're color grading and processing video. So it's amazing for stills, amazing for video as well. I'm really, really excited to get out in the field and use this thing. Okay, so let's talk about tripods here. So I actually got a new tripod this year. I got, uh, this is the Colorado uh, Tripod Company Centennial with a Highline ball head. I'm using this. I'm also using a really right stuff tripod, uh, the TFC 14 with a BH30. Uh, the really really right stuff set up, I mean, that's like top of the line. Uh, you're gonna pay top dollar, but the quality is, you know, can't be beat. So I love that setup. This is a fraction of the cost though. This is These legs are about 300, the ball head about 100. Um, carbon fiber, I mean, it is just, the build quality is great. It's actually on par, I think, uh, with my really right stuff rig. So um, I really like this. The one thing too is it has a center column. My really right stuff tripod doesn't. So this has a center column and I've been in scenarios with the TFC 14 where I just haven't been able to get it as high as I want and I missed out on a composition. With this, I can extend the center column if I want. If I know I'm gonna be shooting lower to the ground though, I can just unscrew it and take the center column out. And that makes it a really, really lightweight setup. I like the Highline head. Uh, the Highline head, is, it, it, it's really good, it's smooth. I think though, if you want the best performance, it's really hard to beat really right stuff's line. I mean, the BH30 is probably the best lightweight uh, ball head I've used. Um, in terms of legs though, I'm really impressed with what uh, Colorado Tripod Company has been able to do. These legs are really, really amazing. So I think my ideal setup actually is these legs and the BH30. So you're gonna splurge on the ball head, but I mean, it's worth it. You're using it every time you go out and shoot. And the legs, I mean, these legs, fraction of the price really right stuff, and they, they just work great. I haven't had them lock up in cold weather. Um, they're really nice and fluid, and I like having the option of having a center column. So I'm excited uh, you know, to use this. I'll bring two tripods on most trips um, just because I do a lot more video work now. So you know, I'm shooting stills, I'm shooting video. I've got a two tripod setup and I really like both. I, I recommend both for sure. Now, where is all this gear going? So I've got an F-stop Talopa bag. This is a 50 liter pack. It doesn't look like it. And it's a little bit deceiving because a lot of the space is in its width. Uh, it's, it's, you know, you can, I, I carry this on all the time. It's, it's uh, short enough to go in, you know, the um, carry on compartments, never had an issue, but you can fit a lot of stuff in it. Um, I, I would recommend going with this over the 40 liter option because it has 
a better hip belt, so it's more comfortable. And then it's got some, uh, you know, more zippers and features and more storage options, which I really like. So this has been an awesome camera pack. And what's really nice is, you know, you're out in the field, you're shooting, right? All you have to do is, you know, put your pack down, you just unzip the back, and uh, there we go, right? So camera lenses go in here, I put my filters in here, uh, and then I still have some space above it. So this is called an ICU, it's kind of how f-stop, uh, you know, handles getting your camera gear packed, but also in a really accessible way. Um, this is a medium ICU. I think I'm going to put a large in though because uh, I'm going to have to carry my camera, all those lenses, I get the drone in here. Uh, so I'll probably upgrade. I'll still have a decent amount of space though if I want to put a jacket in or anything like that. So I really, really like this pack. Uh, I've really been happy with it. Like I said, I had a 40 liter pack in the past. This one, the size difference is like you never notice it. Uh, so like when you're carrying something on or doing all that, you never notice the size difference, but there's that 10 liters of extra storage does go a long way. Uh, so I really like that pack when I'm backpacking or anything like that. I'll, I'll use a dedicated backpack because it's just way more comfortable if I'm carrying a lot of weight or hiking long distances. So, um, another new piece of gear, uh, for this year is a star tracker. Now I've kind of avoided star trackers because, um, you know, they can be bulky, you know, the ioptron, some of those really well-known high quality, uh, star trackers, they're just, they're big. They add a lot of weight and they take up room in your kit. Now I bought this move, shoot, move star tracker. And I mean, this is it. It comes with a laser pointer as well, but this is it. Uh, it's super small. It's light. Uh, you attach a ball head. Well, you basically take a ball head, attach it to that ball head, and then you put your main ball head on top in your camera. And this will allow you to track stars or the Milky Way. So you can take, you know, minutes of exposure without the sky, uh, you know, without your stars blurring and obviously the, the, the motion of the earth. So this will track the, the, the sky. You can get really high quality, low ISO shots. So I've been really been happy with it. It works great and you cannot beat the size. So again, this is the move, shoot, move star tracker. I use it for all my astrophotography. Okay, now one thing uh, I thought I'd talk about before we kind of wrap up is this isn't necessarily a piece of photography equipment. Uh, these are in fact waders, but I use these so much. I mean, if I had to pick one piece of equipment that's not, you know, not related to technology, not related to, you know, actually being like a camera or a lens or a tripod, something like that, I would pick waders. They allow you to get wet. They open up a lot of, you know, composition opportunities. They let you be creative. You don't have to worry about getting wet. So if I'm shooting waterfalls, any type of water, you know, a lake, a stream, a creek, a river, whatever, uh, you know, I'm, I'm putting waders on. Uh, I use them all the time. If I'm out shooting on the coast, I'm putting waders on. These are ultra light. They're, they're breathable and they're pretty affordable. This is a Cabela's lightweight waders. So if I go on a trip and I know there's water and I might get a shot near water, I'm going to bring these because again, I can get in the water. And, uh, I, when I think of some of my best shots, they've been from actually being in the water and taking pictures. So Highly recommend waders. Uh, for a lightweight option, you could look into neoprene socks. I use neoprene socks a ton as well, especially if I'm backpacking. I don't want to carry this. You know, I can't just pull it out from my car. I'll bring neoprene socks because if the water's cold, you throw those socks on, get in the water, and uh, it just makes shooting way more comfortable. So you can focus on getting the shot versus, you know, freezing or worried, being worried about getting wet. So that's what's in my camera bag for this year. And I really don't see it changing. Um, maybe an upgrade at the camera position, but Nikon's really gonna have to make a splash. You know, there, there's gonna have to be a really big announcement for me to switch from the Z7. So, uh, you know, we'll see what happens, but I will say I'm really happy with all the gear I have. I've spent a lot of time in the field. I've used a lot of different brands and types of gear. 
And really what I've went through in this video, this is what I've kind of ended on, right? Because you don't want to carry too much gear, but you also want to be prepared. So this is what I bring with me on trips. Uh, and you know, I, I don't feel like I've been limited by the gear and equipment I have. I actually feel like it's enabled me to get some really incredible shots over the years. So I'm really happy with my kit. Now I know this was a little bit more landscape centric. So as I said in the beginning, uh, our great wildlife and landscape guide, Ben Blankenship is going to do uh, kind of cover the gear he's using. And that'll be a little bit more wildlife centric. You know, we'll talk about some telephotos and things like that. So stay tuned for that. But I hope this helped you. If you have a question on gear, uh, you know, leave it below in the comments and we'll get back to you. But I honestly hope this helped you. Uh, I, like I said, I've spent a lot of time figuring out what's the best gear out there and uh, what's just going to make your life easier when you're in the field. So hope you guys enjoyed the video. Um, thanks for watching. And if you do have questions, let us know. But other than that, take care and I'll catch you in the next video.